Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we are looking at Antex GX700 Budget Glass Gaming Case which retails in the $60 price range and is targeted toward entry level systems and budget gaming PCs. I built our test bench in the GX700 and benchmarked for thermals using multiple fan configurations and the stock configuration. Uh, I also routed all of the cables and did basic quality checks for the review. So before we get to all of that, all the actual reviewing of the case, as always, Let's go over the hard specs of the case before diving into my own analysis and opinions to give you an idea of what we're working with here. We'll hit thermal data toward the end along with alternative case recommendations if you don't like this one. So first of all, I first saw this case at CES 2013 where Antec showcased the case's basic features and, uh, and the aesthetic of it. But here we have a bit more details, so first of all, as for objective specs, the GX700 stands at a pretty non-threatening 20 inches tall, firmly ranking it as a mid-tower ATX enclosure. It's not a massive case, but it's not tiny either, so if you want something that can be desk-bound and you're not terrified, will fall over and punch a hole through your wood floor then this is probably about the right size for that. But uh, anyway, it's the GX700 comes equipped stock with three case fans in total, two 140mm top exhaust fans and one 120mm rear exhaust fan. There are no intake fans in the stock configuration, and uh, most CPU coolers will fit in the GX700 given its 172mm CPU cooler height allowance, although some wider coolers may collide with the side intake position, so be aware a couple of non-grommeted cable routing holes are present in the standard locations on the board tray. There's nothing really flashy here, just the basics, so uh, you can pretty easily route the front panel and power connectors through the cutouts, though the SATA location isn't ideal for uh, some ATX boards. So uh, the rear side of the case has 13 millimeters of clearance between the board tray and the side panel and surprisingly this actually ended up being plenty of room for my stacked 24 pin and 6 pin connector cable routing though I did put some effort into tying it all very close to the board tray. The GX700 also comes equipped with a couple of stylized elements and switches on the outside included uh, among these is a fan speed controller. The fan speed controller is not a linear dial, it is actually a toggle, so it just toggles from maximum, low, uh, or off settings, and this is done by throttling voltage to the fans, it just it picks either max voltage or a throttled voltage, and then that lowers the fan speed, pretty standard stuff. The fan speed switch is concealed under a Cold War era nuclear launch cover, so depending on your taste, that's either extremely gaudy or kinda cool, and I'll leave that entirely up to you as it is more of a subjective thing. The exterior on the whole is largely the same way Antec's own logo kind of showcases this as it is branded on a dog tag attached to the front panel. And then of course the power button is a large cheap piece of plastic that's kind of colored with like the USSR red. So if you like that kind of thing, awesome, check it out. Uh, if not, then I don't know, maybe strip the paint or something. In general, the case resembles a cheaper version of Corsair C70, so if you want the C70 but can't quite afford it, then this is probably your best bet in the budget range. The paint isn't anything to brag or complain about, so really it's just another idiosyncratic matter. If you like the color, you like it. If you don't, you don't. What are you going to do? Uh, let's talk about cable management and installation now. So these are a bit more flexible elements here. Cable management was shockingly easy in the GX700. It wasn't as easy as, say, a $150 or $200 case, but very easy and uh, surprisingly so for a budget case. It did have a couple of caveats that I want to note for those of you who buy this and need some help routing cables. For starters, the HD audio cable is incredibly short and the header wouldn't fit through the optimal cable pass-through if the power supply was already mounted. For this reason, I'd suggest routing all I.O. cables and connecting them to the board prior to mounting the power supply, and then go ahead and route your uh, mount the PSU and connect the power connectors from that. The PSU won't pinch the cables or cause any damage, at least in my build. Obviously, you should judge this on an individual basis, but it is large enough to prohibit cable routing if already mounted, so keep that in mind. Other than that, all the cables fit behind the board and the panel closed without any warping or outward bowing. For a $60 case, this is a feat worthy of note, so I'm noting it. <laughs> if you're working with a non-modular PSU, you're, and you probably are if you're buying a case at this price, 
It'll be a bit tougher to hide all the cables, but it is possible with the right finagling. I would suggest removing the bottom two drive brackets and then kind of snake your cables into that drive cage area. Try to do so without blocking front intake if you have a fan there. Finally, we hit benchmarks. I tested the stock configuration against several aftermarket configurations, basically in an attempt to answer the often asked question of, if I added one more fan, what and where should it be? To see those tests, hit the article link in the description below. That said, let's talk about the benchmark against other cases. Our test methodology uses a clean system with an i5 3570K at 4.4 gigahertz. CPU tests are run using Prime 95 and logged using hardware monitor and then normalized in a spreadsheet. The GPU component is tested with an XFX 7850 video card, which is a pretty small card, so it doesn't generate the same amount of heat as something that's bigger, like a, a 680 or 780. And let's just jump into it. Here's the CPU benchmark for the G GX700. You should mostly be looking at the GX700 versus Rosewell's R5, which is a $50 case right now, Silverstone's KL04, and Raid Max's Cobra case. On high settings, the GX700 ranks firmly between the competing Cobra and R5, though one of my fan optimization tricks did place the GX700 up uh, just below the R5, and above the 820, so kind of vision it there if you do one of my fan tricks. Again, hit the article link for that. Performance is largely uninspiring, but isn't bad. We'll call it above average for a $60 case, and then move on. So here's the GPU test. Again, nothing to write home about. Our GPU thermal delta only has a swing of 5 Celsius total between all the cases, so things are fairly stable across the board and uninteresting. The GX700 on high settings rests between the KL04 and Cobra. Again, it is below the R5. It seems if you're looking for peak thermal performance, the R5 is the way to go. Let's be realistic, though. Most of us aren't going to notice a 1 to 2C thermal delta between cases. If you're working with hotter hardware like AMD products and really want to overclock but are confined in a cheap case, then definitely pay close attention to temperature data. Pick the coolest case. If you're not planning on doing much overclocking or enthusiast work and just want to build a cheap system, pick based on quality of materials, construction, ease of installation, and aesthetics, whatever you're going to be okay with looking at for a few years. At the end of the day, the GX700 has solid build quality. All the paneling is sturdy and firm. Uh, even the plastic front panel, surprisingly, was pretty easy to remove and sturdy, which was awesome after working with the H630. And uh, it also has good cable management features, decent ease of installation features for novices, and average to above average cooling. I can pretty readily recommend the GX700 to system builders looking to get a case in the $50 to $60 range, but there are some seriously good alternatives out there. I'd strongly encourage you to look into Corsair's 200R and Rosewell's R5, both linked below, if you, uh, if you kind of want to look at the competition. If you have more room in your budget and want something similar to the GX700, but a, a bit higher quality, look into Corsair's C70 case. That's all for this review. Be sure to check the article link in the description below, and I will see you all next time. Peace.